And it's time for another grading video. So if you want to learn how to grade comic books, or at least learn how I do it, or if you just like looking at groovy old Silver Age DC comics, well, this is the video for you. So stick around and have some fun. You just might learn something before we're done. Hey there, Bobby. Welcome to Shanghai. My name is Duke, and this is another grading video. Today, we will be looking at this stack of House of Secrets and this stack of Metal Man comics, DC comics from the 1960s. Uh, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. Uh, pausing only long enough for me to do the beg. Please like, share, subscribe, do all of those things. And the disclosure. These are not my own books. These are books I am grading for work. So these will all appear on the eBay store of uh, .com Comics. .com Comics and Collectibles in Freeport, Maine. That's where I work. I do the grading for them. You may have seen the unboxing videos on the Sell My Comic Books YouTube account. And that's where we uh, unbox collections as they come in. You may have seen these books there. Well, this is the next step in the process. Once those books are unboxed, and sorted into different uh, sales categories. The ones that will go on eBay as raw singles, that means not slabbed and not graded by CGC, they are instead graded by me, and they go up just like you see them here. So these will all appear on eBay probably within a week or two of when you see this video. So again, let's get right to it. And I like to chat a bit about the books as well. So uh, this is House of Secrets 49 starring Mark Merlin. Uh, and, you know, poor old Mark, he just kind of missed the boat. He started in House of Secrets 23, ran till about 73 when they turned him into uh, Prince Raman. Uh, <laughs> kind of tried to give him a little bit of an upgrade. But if they had done that sooner, because Mark Merlin actually uh, predates the Hal Jordan Green Lantern by a couple of months. And, you know, if they had thought to give him a cape and some mystical artifact... Well, Mark Merlin could have been a founding member of the Justice League of America, kind of uh, kind of DC's own Doctor Strange, if you will. But uh, no, they didn't upgrade him until later in the 60s when they turned him into Prince Raman. And that only lasted about 10 issues or so. And then he's been pretty much in comic book limbo ever since. Um, and, you know, he really wasn't trumpeted that much. I've already looked in this book and you can see that I mean, just to look at that splash page, you would not really know that he was a, a big recurring character. His uh, girlfriend here, uh, Elsa, was pretty much the uh, Clea. Uh, she is to Mark Merlin as Clea was to Doctor Strange. Okay, so let's look at this book and how I do this when I grade a book. Uh, I first do an instant assessment. You know, is it uh, good, fine, or near mint? And I would call this a fine. Then I'm like, well, is it very good or very fine? Well, it's it's probably closer to very fine, actually. Um, and very fine would be a seven, uh, would be an 8.0. A fine would be a 6.0. And so that's when I start zeroing in, uh, looking at the damages. And right away, I see I see this corner here where it looks like it's been chewed. And <laughs> well, that takes away the very fine, doesn't it? Uh, now we're down to uh, probably below a 6.0. And you can also see here, maybe uh, if I point it out with this pen, you can see you got a little bit of a, a little bit of a tear right there in the spine. So that's that's not too good. Between this chew and that tear on the spine, uh, that probably brings me down to a 5.0. Beyond that, the book doesn't look too bad. You've got some blunted corners. Uh, kind of a dust shadow here along the top. But I don't think any of... Oh, and there's also... I don't know if you can see it in the light, but there are some numbers written here. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, maybe an 11, 8, 24. I have no idea what those numbers would represent. I don't think it's any kind of an arrival date because this book would have been on stands three months before the cover date. So uh, what would that be? August? So, uh, no July. So I don't really know what that is supposed to signify, if if indeed anything. But I don't really see enough here that I, I would knock it down to a 4.5. And what I thought was a dust shadow, as we look through the inside of the book, 
making sure to stop at the centerfold if we find it, just to make sure that's all tight. I don't, I missed the centerfold. <laughs> Let's look again. Let's look again. There it is. And it is all tight and the front cover is tight. But you can see the kind of the page quality. It's kind of tanning up here, almost, almost browning up here at the top. And so that might not be a dust shadow. That might be just a matter of the book was maybe had other books on top of it and it was exposed to more light than the rest of the book. Otherwise, it looks good. That's why I initially called it a fine or maybe even a very fine because it's got decent cover gloss when you consider that this was 1961. <laughs> so that's older than me even. And I know what kind of condition I'm in, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, HP here down in the corner. I don't know. That's probably Howard Purcell. I don't know. And then I noticed the second story had, uh, Bill Eli, you can see down here signed. And I'm not sure who did the Mark Merlin story. Uh, it's not signed. So I guess we would have to go to the Grand Comics database online good old uh, GCD and find out who actually did that artwork. But yeah, I think uh, I'm going to call that a 5.0. So uh, as a, you know, the other thing too, I see here, and you may not be able to pick it up on the camera, but there are some, some vertical fading here, four of them. It almost looks like an eraser mark, or maybe it was in a bag that, um, some of the bag was touching and some wasn't, so it faded over time. Hard to say. You also have a really light, a light crease along here. And just a little bit of a micro tear right there. But all of that is not enough, I don't think, to bring it down to a 4.5. I think that is a, a 5 anyway. And without that corner chewed up here, I would be inclined to call it a 5.5 without, without that rip in the spine right there. I would even call it a 6.0. But we're going to go with a 5. And if you feel differently, then I invite you to please do leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. All right, here's some more Mark Merlin. And uh, this is issue number 50. Again, we have some writing here. Uh, VP928. What in the world could that mean? What in the world could that mean? The 928 maybe could be an arrival date, or if not an arrival date, maybe a, you know, when to take it off the stands, because that would be two months before the, the cover date. Really hard to say. Uh, this one has about a quarter inch tear in the cover right there. But otherwise, this is a nice looking copy, although, whoops, <laughs> as I say that, and you can see there's that little chip taken out of the cover. Well, that's too bad. Back cover looks good. Here's old uh, Mark still uh, Meskin. So this is Mort Meskin did the art on this. You know, and, and really they could have at any time could have turned Mark Merlin into uh, DC's version of uh, Doctor Strange. Just a cape and a and I have Agamotto. <laughs> he could have been in the Justice League. Uh, I'm looking for the centerfold. I'll always check the centerfold. Make sure it's there. Make sure it's tight. It looks good. Not sure who did the art on this. And... Yeah, <laughs> this no face thing was kind of a common trope. You would see that on quite a lot of these DC uh, Silver Age comics. I saw something kind of neat here as I was flipping through. There it is. Rip Hunter. Oh, another three-part thriller. I thought that might have been an ad for the first issue. So, I think I'm going to call that... You know, if not for this chip, I would be inclined to call it a six maybe even a 6.5. Well, again with the tear here. 
but I think I'm going to go with a 5-5. Five, five. I think that's a pretty solid 5-5. Five, five. It's a nice looking copy overall. And that's really what you want out of a fine. A fine should look like a book that was maybe read a few times, carefully handled. Um, you know, and most of its damage would come not from being beaten up and kicked around, but just, you know, having been read. Because these were manufactured as disposable consumer goods. They're going to pick up a little damage just from reading them. Um, but I think I'm going with a 5-5 five, five on that one. Here we have issue 51. That's a pretty cool monster cover. Mystery of the Stolen Creature. And again, we have these codes written at the top. It looks like RV or RR. Oh no, R1019. I think that's what these are. These are not arrival dates. These are pull it off the stand dates. Because again, comic books in this period, they were dated three months after they actually arrived. So this December book would actually have arrived at the newsstand sometime in September, right? So September, October, November, December. Um, and that was when the, the distributor was supposed to pull it off the stands. So you could potentially have three issues of House of Secrets if it didn't sell well on the stands at one time. Well, probably the retailer wrote here, you know, he was only going to keep it on the stands for 30 days. And then he was going to pull it, and then, you know, when the when the distributor came to get it, <laughs> he'd pull it out from underneath the counter and give it to him. So I bet you this book probably hit the stand September 19th, and they wrote on it 10-19. Uh, so they knew that's when they were going to pull it off the stands. And then, again, it would go back to the distributor in December. So I bet you anything that's what those numbers are, because they're on... They're on all of these issues. I do not know what the R could possibly represent, unless it's remove, maybe. You tell me what you think. You you uh, leave a comment below and tell me what you think that uh, could possibly be. It doesn't look like this one is signed by Mort Meskin, so I don't know who did the art on this one. Page quality on these books is pretty decent. It's just kind of fading, but not really fading, but uh, browning at the top of the books. and. A little bit at the very bottom. Another uh, Bill Eli. You can see his signature at the bottom of that page. Cry, clown, cry. You know, and it's kind of cool. You know, who is that? That almost looks like Kubert. Who is it? No. <laughs> Ruben and, and uh, Maria. So I was, uh, Maria, I was, I was off on that. But, I mean, you would get three complete stories in one issue. And these days, you can't get, you know, a full story in three issues. Not even in ten. So, I think I'm going to call this... I'm going to call this a six. Because you have some spine ticks here, about four of them. You've got the writing. And an arrival date really doesn't draw down the uh, price... I mean, the uh, condition too much. Got some blunting up here in this corner, which you could probably see better if I held it on the camera. Some more blunting in this corner, but you know this side is real nice. You got to bend there. Got some more blunting here, but overall, I think that's a solid six, and I, I could really go for a six-five on that. Except probably if it didn't have that fold right there, I would probably give it a six-five. But as is, I think I'm going to go with a six. Because you also have some bending back here as well. So I'm going to call that one a six-point zero. Oh. What do you think? Tell me what you think. And now we're on to issue 53. I didn't mention it, but we have uh, we've crossed over into the 12 cent era. This is another nice looking copy. Another Mark Merlin. And it says here R125. So that could actually be an, an arrival date because that would be in January would be three months before April. And it looks a decent looking copy. You got a little tiny, tiny bit of a split up there. That looks more like a manufacturing split than one from handling. Oh, here you go. Statement of ownership and circulation. So at this point, 
House of Secrets was averaging 205,000 copies sold per month. Pretty good. <laughs> when you consider that today, uh, Superman is probably selling, what, about 60,000? Uh, so, uh, you know, a uh, a bottom-tier book with, you know, a one continuing character, but a, a kind of not terribly exciting one at that. <laughs> Sorry to any Mark Merlin fans out there, but kind of how it is. <laughs> Aquaman, now in his own magazine. What issue number are they pushing there? I can't tell. But that Justice League is only issue 10, so... We're pretty early in the DCU here, or at least the Silver Age DCU. So I'm going to call that one. you got a, a little bit of a bend here, a horizontal bend. And on this one, you've got some ticks, kind of smaller ticks, but along the full length, as opposed to a few bigger ones concentrated in one area. But I think, and you get a little micro tear right here. But I think this one, I'm going to give this one a, a I'm going to go 6.5 on that one. 6.5. Okay, so let's uh, let's keep going. This one is not just a Mark Merlin mystery. It's an astounding Mark Merlin mystery. This is number 54. And this is a pretty nice looking copy as well. Uh, a few ticks here. One, two, three. Maybe a little more there. Blunting here. That top corner is blunted up pretty good, and we've got a little bit of a tear right there. Hope you can see my lighting is not the best today. But that back cover looks really nice, and it the paper quality is is quite nice. It's it's uh, pretty vibrant, pretty white. Page quality is good. Where's that centerfold? I think I just passed it. Nice and tight on the centerfold. So I think uh, I think that one's going to get a 6.5. That one, you know what? I'm actually going to go to a 7 on this one. I could probably get away with a 7.5, but I, I hate to risk it. <laughs> you know how people are. I call that a seven, and someone is gonna, someone's gonna write and complain and say it's a, you know, it's a four, and not write in the comments below. That's no problem, but you know, write my boss, <laughs> you know, on eBay, and complain that that's really a four. Well, this one's not a four, but it's a little less than that last one, primarily because of this chip here on the top. You can see a little piece out. But the spine looks pretty nice. Again, you get a little bit of a fold there. Probably where somebody folded back the cover while they were reading it. But only one, two, three, four light, light ticks there. The corners are nice. They're not blunted too badly. A little bit of a bend here where obviously somebody was holding it while they read it. That corner's folded a little bit. Oh, is it missing... Well, no, that's just bent. So we're going to bend down here. And you can see these pages. That bend kind of goes all the way through the book. That uh, <laughs> This book was probably dropped at some point. So, but it looks, uh, you know, it looks good. Mark Merlin uh, has moved to the middle of the book. That might... Uh, indicated decline in uh, old Mark's fortunes, because usually, you know, the uh, the main character anchored the anthology, and was he was either the first book or the last, I mean, the first story or the last one. And in the middle is <laughs> it's where you put the, uh, the chaff. The wheat went on either end, and the chaff went in the middle. 1962, The Menace of the Magic Metal, Cyclops. So I think this one, I think I'm going to call that one a 5-5. Five, five. Because this would be, this would be a 7-7-5, seven, seven, but for that piece out. And I think between that piece out and this bend down here, that goes through the whole book, 
I don't think I can quite get away with a six. So I'm going to go a five, five. But without those two things, that would probably be a seven, five. So I think if you buy that book on eBay, you'll be pretty happy with it. That's what I think. All right, House of Secrets number 56. And uh, this is another nice looking book. You got some bending here and a few ticks. You got some bending here and here. Otherwise, not too bad. Oh, well, that's a heartbreaker. See that water stain down here? So that's going to bring us down to probably a, a 4 5 anyway. So what do you take off for water stains? I know some people who uh, who don't stand them at all. You know, any water stain at all, they'll call it a 2.0. And that centerfold looks okay. Page sugar quality isn't quite as nice of the, as those other issues. Mark has now moved to the front of the book, so he's graduated from the back to the middle and now to the front. Mark Merlin, Sleuth of the Supernatural. Well, at least he has his own logo of a sorts now as well. 1962. Well, I would be inclined. Here's how I'm going to treat that water stain. I would be inclined to call this book probably a 6.5. But with that water stain, I'm probably going to knock that off 2. Two points. I'm going to call this a 4-5. So how much would you detract for that water stain? Assuming that you're starting at a 6-5, what would you call it? And actually, yeah, I might even have called it a 6. I don't know. So from a 6 or a 6-5, what would you knock it down to? For me, it's going to be, because there's a little rip here at this staple as well. But for me, I'm going to call it a 4-5. This one feels like it's got a little bit of a spine roll starting. And, uh, some color chipping or fading there. A fair number of ticks. A little piece out here. I don't know if you can see in the spine, but there's a chip in the spine there. You can see those. You can see those breaks a little more in the color. A little bit of a spine split here at the top. So back looks okay, but you can see. Here, where that spine roll is starting, that line. <laughs> I'm just laughing because some of these kids were in these uh, in these flower seed ads for like years and years and years. I've seen a lot of him, <laughs> and then some of them look like you know this picture was not taken in 1962. It looks like it might have been taken in 1942. But a couple of micro tears uh, here on the back edge. Nope, Mark has, uh, oh, Mark Merlin's mailbox, so look at that. Looks like Mark was getting popular enough that he uh, he commanded the, the letters page. So again, it's kind of surprising that there aren't a lot more Mark Merlin fans out there, that he's not something that has been revived by DC. And here uh, it is Mort Meskin again. So this one is uh, this one's a little rougher than the ones we've seen before. Not bad though. Still, I think I would call that a five five. I mean, rougher. It's got more stuff going on, but it's all minor stuff. You know, instead of a few big defects, it's got a, an accumulation of smaller defects. So I think I'm going to call that a hmm. I'm going to call it a five five. If it didn't have this chip out of the spine here. Or those, whatever's going on here, that those the color is chipped off. I I would I would even call that a six, but I think I'm going to go with a five five. Get that bad boy out of here. And this is our last house of secrets. So at this point, and this is uh, I don't know, Mark Star fell pretty quick because we went from. Number 59 to 68. So in the space of about 10 issues, he has lost his cover feature. 
Oh well, <laughs> I misspoke. So we still got the cover, but uh, Eclipso here is uh, coming up fast on his flank and is about to take over this book. As I said, Mark will get turned into, at issue 73, he becomes Prince Raman. <laughs> Prince Raman, the Noodle King. <laughs> Uh, no, he, he did not have noodle-based powers, uh, Prince Raman. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be awesome, though? <laughs> and it uh, looks like he's... Is he kicked to the back of the book again? He is. The Return of Morlu. Sounds like a... Stanley Jack Kirby Marvel monster. And we've got a little short story. No, it's Eclipso, so the... The book is down to just two features instead of three, Eclipso and Mark Merlin. And Eclipso is out front. So I think this one, you know, we got some blunting here. Some chips along, some blunting there. A little bend here, kind of a weird bend there. The neck corner's blunted, but otherwise, not that bad. Got a ding here in the middle of the spine. That's kind of a weird thing. But I'm going to call this a, a good solid 6. I could even go 6.5. I'm going to go 6.5 on that. What would you do? I'm going to call that a 6.5. And that is our last House of Secrets. So we are now on to the Metal Men. And the Metal Men... Uh, you don't realize it today because they got a hard job to keep a book going, but uh, the metal men were not inconsequential in their time. I mean, if you look at Comicron and the sales figures, metal men was moving, you know, 300, 350,000 copies a month, if I can remember correctly. So this is issue five, and it's got, again, this same code on the cover, R1031. That, so I think that's probably an arrival date. That is three months before before uh, the cover date. So we've got a, a fold here that goes about that far. That's all folded in with a little kind of a micro tear there. A little blunting at the top, a little blunting here. We've got some, oh, seven or eight or nine spine ticks along there. A little bit of color fading here at the bottom, and that that corner is blunted up pretty good. Otherwise, though, it looks nice and tight. Paper is tanning. I want to kind of look at that back cover if I can, make sure that's tight. Boom, boom. Find that center fold, and it's nice and tight. So these books are all nice and flat and tight, and that's good. This is uh, December 63, January 64. So I am going to call that, I think that's a, that's a 6. And without this here, it'd be an easy 6.5, even with this down here. But I think between that kind of major blunting here, and this one, it goes, you know, that far, bent inward. I'm going to call that a six. We are on to issue, that was issue five. I don't know if I mentioned it. This is issue eight. And that's a really good looking issue, really. Um, because, I mean, with this black right here, those spine ticks would really show up. But you've only got a little of the top staple and then some smaller ones here along. This is kind of nice and tight. A little blunting here on that corner. A little blunting on these two corners, but other than that, not too bad. Not too bad. Paper is kind of tanning a little bit, so that's that's a detraction. Uh, this is too bad. I think... Yeah. Centerfold. Can you see it? The centerfold is detached at the bottom stable. The next wrap looks attached. 
So I was I was about to call this a 7.5, but I think with that centerfold detachment, I'm probably going to have to go down to a 6.5. So I guess that's another question for you. You know, if you had a 7.5, how much would you knock off for the centerfold being detached from just one staple? In this case, I think with the accumulation of defects, I mean, I was probably pushing it for a 7.5. It was probably a 7. And this is number nine. This is another good looking book. Not many ticks here, a few. A little bit of a discoloration there. A little bit of blunting there. This edge looks okay. Look, some chips here. And that's probably, you know, kind of like marble chipping. That's probably the press that did that. A little bit of a tear up here in this corner. Tiny, tiny tear. Back cover looks good. Again, as with all these metal vent books, the paper is uh, tanning up. But this one, the centerfold is fully attached. So I think this one I am going to give. I think I am going to give that one. God. I really want to give it a 7.5, but yeah, it got a little bit of blunting here and those chips. A little bit of a tear there. Micro tears and a little discoloration. Yeah, I'm going to go with a 7. Not quite good enough that I can go 7.5, although I would dearly like to. But that's, you know, out of the stack of books, that's our first 7, so... That's the uh, that's the gem of the pile so far. Although, well, I was going to say this one might outdo it, but I can instantly see that it's not. I said that because it's got really nice cover gloss. I mean, that almost looks new. But we've got a lot of spine ticks right in through here. There's probably 8 or 10 or 12 right through there. The top and the sides are pretty tight. I would be, you know, this is Metal Man number 10. I would be really happy with this book in my collection. This corner is blunted. But I don't think we can quite get away with uh, giving it a high grade. Some kind of weird spots here. That's not foxing or molding. But it's just a little bit of soiling. And it's all in kind of vertical strips. So I don't know what this, what this rubbed up against. And we got some... A little bit of a micro tear there and some soiling. Oh, look inside. See, this is why you always look inside, right? You can see, hopefully, you can see it. The corner of a lot of these pages is torn. Can you see it? I mean, it's just the very smallest edge of the corner, but it's torn away on a bunch of those pages. So that's not really great. What actress does that look like? Why? Why does she? I almost want to say Phyllis Diller. It's like a young Phyllis Diller. Who is this? Is it supposed to be somebody? Smoking is for squares. Well, I guess we know that. Paulette Breen. Was Paulette Breen a real person? I don't know. That looks like somebody was trying to draw a real person. And like I said, <laughs> it looks like a young Phyllis Diller. I know a lot of you reading, uh, a lot of you watching this. Probably don't have clue one who Phyllis Diller is. Well, I guess, you know, Google her. <laughs> um, oh, not Phyllis. I, I was going to say she was Benita Bazaar, but that was Martha Ray played Benita Bazaar on the uh, Bugaloos. And <laughs> you probably don't even know who the Bugaloos are. So I am giving away my age. Uh, so I am going to go, all, I'm going to call this book a six. Again, you know, it's, initially it's got some really nice eye appeal. And again, that's largely because of the cover gloss is still there really nice, but it's got a lot of other things going on. All minor things, but enough that I'm going to give it a six. And we are getting down to the bottom of this pile. If you can believe such a thing. We've only got two more books left. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, this is a decent looking book. 
And again, we've got maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, not even tears, but just, just um, stresses. But the other edges all look, all look nice and flat and clean. That cover's pretty clean. The pages in this book are a little better than the rest that we've seen so far. Center folds nice and tight. I am going to give that book a seven. A few less stresses here, and I might go to a seven five, but um, and you've got not really a spine roll, but kind of the start of you know it's not flat you press this book and i bet you could get a seven five out of it maybe even an eight but as it is i think it's going to be a seven so you buy that from us for a seven i say us but you know the guy i work for <laughs> you buy it from them <laughs> and uh you press it and you can turn that seven probably into an eight pretty pretty easy all right so this is this this one is the best looking of the of the lot so far. This this one is going to be our gem because you've got only right there. Otherwise, kind of just the very lightest right here too. The lightest of stresses. A little blunting here. Very light blunting there. This edge is all nice and tight. That corner very light blunting on both corners but nice and tight along the top back cover looks good again not super flat you can see it's starting to bow a little bit um, a little bit of a thing there where it was probably folded back probably folded back but you could press that out and again oh look at that so uh, I wasn't far off. Statement of Ownership and Circulation. Metal Men in uh, 1965. Issue 12. Let's see if I can find it again. Metal Men was averaging sales of 291,000 copies per month. And uh, issue closest to filing date, 336,000. So it was, it was doing better than 300,000 copies a month. So that ain't bad. That ain't shabby at all. So Metalman kind of fell off a cliff. It's surprising the Metalman did not last longer with, with sales that solid at the beginning. So I don't know what, uh, what sort of knocked the Metalman off their pedestal. But I think that book, I'm going to give that a 7.5. I am. I almost want to give it an 8, but like I said, I always hedge on the cautionary side. But I'm going to call that a 7.5. What would I need to give it an 8? Probably this stress here around the bottom staple on both the front and back would have to be a little less. You got a little, little chip there mid-spine. If that wasn't there, I could probably see this as an 8. But as it is, I think a 7.5 is about the best we can do. But Buddy, that's not bad for, for that old of a comic book. And that's it. That is everything we've got. So, uh, by the power of Grayskull, <laughs> or Skeletor, I should say. Uh, <laughs> until the next video, good night, good luck, and please be good to each other.